worked with us present this morning, whether you are here with us or whether you are online, welcome, welcome, welcome to First United Methodist Church, Midlothian. Um, I'm April Failer. I'm one of the pastors here, and it's good to see each and every one of you. And for those of you who are joining us online, feel free to greet one another there. And if you'd like to leave a, a comment there to let us know that you're, that you're there with us, or if you have a comment or a prayer you'd like for us to pray about, um, let the, the pastors know. That would be great. We'd like to keep up with you in that way. Now, today is a very special day in this worship service. Not only are we taking communion today, but we're also remembering our saints today. And in the Methodist tradition, that means that we're setting aside time to remember those who have passed in this past 12 months. And so we look forward to sharing that time with you. Now, because we have so much time and so many things going on this morning, I'm going to ask that those of you at home would be preparing yourselves for communion um, this early in the game. Now, uh, what this means for us is that since we've got the, the All Saints celebration going on, it means that I'd like you to connect what represents the body and the blood of Christ to you, bring those things together at this time, whether it be juice and crackers or bread and juice for you, um, bring that together so that when it's time for us to do communion, you can join us there and be part of all the other things that we're celebrating today. So get that stuff together um, right about now. That would be great. And as we are gathering together at this moment, whether you're in person with us or whether you're gathering around a screen, this is at this moment that I'm asking you to take all that you've brought with you and set it aside. All the concerns or the worries, all of the, the fears or the concerns that you might have, everything that you've arrived here with, just set it aside from you. Take a deep breath. This is a new time. This is a new way. And as we come together, be ready. Get ready to experience the presence of God in this moment of worship. And I'm excited to uh, introduce to you our new leaders of worship, Cooper and Caroline Johnson. I know. And let us move forward in song. Please stand. God. 
We've come to a time in our service where we are honoring those to remember those of Christian faith who have died over the past year. Now, as Methodists, we use the New Testament definition um, of all those, uh, all those Christian folks throughout time and space where we don't talk about it maybe like the Catholics do. We don't um, honor people that have died in a special way. All of those of faith that have died past, current, and present. We celebrate the communion of saints as we remember those who have passed, which is why every year we read the names of those of us who have, been, who have passed that were close to each of us. And as I read each name, a candle will be lit in their honor as a bell will be rung. Now let me say this. COVID has made it near impossible to create a comprehensive list of all of those who've passed. And though we've asked for names for those in-person congregations and online congregations, we may not have listed everyone here. So at the end, we will ask for all others unnamed to be said out loud from where you're sitting. And we'll have a moment of silence. And we will light a candle and then ring a bell for those that were not listed here before we say the final prayer so that we can honor all who have passed, whether they are mentioned or not. So hear us as we mention those who have passed. Charles Bailey. Barbara Hampton. Patricia Lewis. Mark McKee. Carl Yarborough. Haley Few. Gail Hampton. Troy Lewis. Peggy Western, Barbara Surratt, Cami Hardy, Dan Pierce, Eric Wilson. Harold Berg, Betty Rogers, Charles Webb, David Reeves, Gavin Robbins. Leonard Retz, Janice Troll, Jim Huddleston, Joseph Cheevers, Larry Love, Christine Retz, Jerry Gentry, John Dickey, Ken Stokem, Munkin Eldweek, Barney Slayton. Norbert Gall, Paul Danford, Vernon Proctor, Tristan Slayton, 
Marie Slayton, Myrtle Gall, and Shirley Gustafston. Let us take a moment of silence for those who have not been listed or read. And please, from the hearts for those who are sitting here or at home, please say the names that you would like to be remembered that have not been remembered here. For all of those that we may have missed today, let their names be known. Let that light of a candle be representing them today with one more ring of the bell. Let us pray. For all of your servants, Lord, having finished their course, now rest for their labors. For all of your servants, Lord, who have experienced loss, may they know your peace that passes understanding. For all of your servants who struggle with their search for the new normal, Give them strength and resolve to find a new way. For all of your servants who serve with all of their heart, give them your vision to serve in new ways. For all of your servants who live in fear, give them your healing breath that same breath you use to bring life to dust so that they may know your presence without question. As the greatest of all servants, Jesus, he knew his disciples. We knew he would grapple with all of these things. Lord, we knew. He knew that in a prayer, maybe with the one prayer that maybe they can keep the faith alive, that maybe they would know what to do and be able to live a life of faith when they experienced that loss, when they experienced that struggle for the new normal, when they served with all of their heart but lost their way, when they lived in fear and needed that healing breath to know your presence. These are paths that disciples tend to walk very frequently. Lord, we live in these paths and we know that even the earliest of disciples experience this. And we know that you have given them a prayer and us a prayer to pray so that we can continue to walk the path by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
look at my scripture this morning. We're starting a new sermon series called Finding Joy. We've come through quite a bit in the last several months. And every once in a while, through some of the darkest of times, we can find things like joy when we least expect it. So today we look at John 15, verse 1. It's a small part of a much greater story about the vine and the vineyard, about how God is the gardener, and Jesus is the vine, and how we are the branches that grow from that vine. And John 15, 11 says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, we all struggle to be our own person when we're little. And so the parents kind of figure out how they can uh, keep us independent as best as they can, but keep us safe at the same time. And so I'm going to take some of you back, maybe, back a little further than you might want to go. 1960s and 70s, they used to have these harnesses for their children. And these weren't just any harnesses. They were mostly metal with a lot of zippers on them. And the reason why I know about these things is because I used to wear them a lot as a child. So stay with me for a second. One of my earliest memories all together of being my own person was my mother would take me to the grocery store and she would put this harness on me that had all of these amazing zippers on them. And most of it was somewhat metal and it would cover me from here all the way down closer to you know, where my legs began and they would have a long strap that you can strap on to a grocery cart. Now, whether you like this idea or not, um, the good news is, is that it was continuously adjusted so they could pull me in or let me out as much as they wanted to. And because they had so many zippers on it, I could never figure out which zipper I could go up and down on that would let me out. So in this case, we went shopping every week at this place called, okay, get ready, Skaggs Albertsons. Y'all remember Skaggs Albertsons? That was before Skaggs Alpha Beta, right? Okay, so that's back in the day. So in me, I was excited. My memories of this moment, covered in zippers and metal, was that I was free, and I was exploring all over the place. I was excited. And my mom continued to adjust my zipper harness so I couldn't go in the pickle aisle and knock things over. I was within just a few inches from being able to do this. And that's a good thing. I didn't realize how good it was until I had children. But I couldn't reach the jars. And it made the task of shopping with three young kids so much easier for her. She had about maybe a year old or 18 months old in the cart and she had a seven-year-old probably also strapped, I'm not sure, on the other side, just to kind of equal out the balance. But in spite of what you think about those metal harnesses, today, I, I have to say, it gave me a great chance to explore my world in a safe environment, to be a big girl in a very, very, very big, scary world. But you know, when you take a step back from that, you start thinking about that kind of exploration. What does it take for us as Christian adults to escape our safe places to learn, to explore who we are in God? Now, I ask this question because our relationship with God can get as predictable as our order in our favorite restaurant. Now, pre-COVID, there are restaurants that I used to be able to go to, and certain waiters or waitresses would know exactly what I wanted before I even sat down. Now, you may have experienced this as well. When I would go into Blue Cheese, and there used to be a red-headed waiter in there, that I would go in at certain afternoons, and you go, the usual, ma'am. And he would be able to get exactly what I wanted in the right order that I wanted because I would go in there a lot. It was a habit. 
We are creatures of habit. We can fall asleep in the way we explore things. Sometimes in our willingness to be open about scripture, we don't find it as explorative anymore. We read it, but we read it by habit, by habit not with an open mind to explore anymore. We forget the importance of forgiving others in the way that Christ forgives fully, deeply. Sometimes, instead of really and truly forgiving someone, we prefer to stay angry or separate from someone. So trying to figure out how to be our own person in a world that rewards us being our individuals and achieving success can be very difficult, even unforgiving at times. Jesus himself was an apprentice. His father showed him the tricks of the trade. He was a carpenter. Success meant money. And if he did right, they'd come back for more. But even as a boy, Jesus knew that we needed more than outside success to find joy in our lives. There was something from within us that held us close to God, something that fed our hearts. And we can see it in the way we love and forgive and need each other. Or maybe we see it better in other people in the way they do it. But it flows within us as simply as the water that flows through a leaf to feed it. In John chapter 15, Jesus describes himself as the vine. And God is the vineyard keeper and, and how we sustain and strengthen from within as we learn to allow Jesus to remain in us through our study of the word Opening ourselves to this ongoing, deeper relationship requires trust and growth that takes time. Remaining or learning to accept God's presence, described in the words of Scripture, is harder to do than you might think. Jesus promises us that if we remain in him and he in us, that we can learn to love like him and forgive like him. But all I wanted to do is kind of figure out exactly how much of him I needed to have in me to do good things. That's how my mind works. Kind of an engineering kind of mind. I need to be able to measure it. And I can remember talking to my father. My father used to read a chapter of the Bible every day. And I can remember looking at him, and he would read it every morning, and I could see it. And I asked him when I was a kid, I said, do you know all the words inside that book? I mean, because he always told me to go read little things up in the dictionary. And so I was kind of surprised that he knew all the words. You know, I was like, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of big words. And my dad said, no. And I said, well, don't you think you need to look it up? And my dad looked at me, he said, no. He goes, it doesn't work that way with the Bible. And I said, well, why not? I mean, you look the book words up, you'll know what the words mean, therefore you'll know more. And dad said, uh-uh, that's not how it works for me. I read it, I may not know what it technically means, God will tell me what I need to know. And each time I read it, I may know a little something different. That's why I keep reading it over and over and over again. Now, if you understand that my dad spent a long time on the railroad, he was a union man. And that's how he got to know God. And that's how God remained in him, because he didn't need to measure things all the time. And I remember coming up to dad and saying, now, wait a second. Now, maybe. If we got this level C, and I didn't know what a level was. I'd seen him use it a couple things when he tried to build a house on the lake once. So I said, well, here's a level. And I know that when this little bubble gets between these two lines, then we can make it kind of make sure that this is vertical or horizontal, and we can measure it. And we can make sure that enough God 
gets into this, and then we, and he goes, that's not how it works, baby. You spend so much time trying to control it, trying to accomplish it, trying to make it yours, that you don't spend enough time letting it become part of you. You're missing the point, baby. You can't measure it or control it or accomplish it like we're used to doing, baby. You got to work at it, but it's not like you think. You can't make an A in this, baby. You can't. Jesus is the vine, bringer of all life. We are the branches. We need to be fed. The vine is feeding us. We can't love without being fed by Christ. That's something my daddy understood. He knew to love us required him to receiving love and grace by, by, by Christ. He knew that. And he knew to be patient with us that he had to read the Bible on a regular basis. He knew that to forgive people that, have, that were cruel to him that he needed to read that Bible. And he knew to be a man who worked a simple job, this, these are his words, I'm a plain manila man working a simple job on a railroad. Some people don't understand my choices, but I raised four kids and I got grandchildren that I'm not raising. It's a pretty good job, pretty good life. I went, I can't argue with that. I know where to find my grace, April. Every day, every morning before I go to work, I know where to find my grace. I know where to find the source of my love, the source of the love that I have for, for your mama, for you and all of your children, all of you, all of you, and my grandchildren. I, that's where it starts for me. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't know it. I wouldn't know it. Without clinging to the Lord, without intentionally choosing to spend this time in Scripture, you can't get changed from the inside out. Now, you can read it by habit. You can pray by habit. You can sit down and take, say grace for everything you've ever had. You can pray by your bed every night like you always do. But unless you really intentionally pray and know that you are in need of help, in need of transformation, in need of God's grace, and that you can't live this life very long without help, without grace, without the love that only God can give you. He said, didn't you know, didn't you know that there is love and grace that has been cut specifically out by God, specifically for you, didn't you know it was made specifically for each one of us? Yours can't go to me. He made it for you. We are the only ones that can drive what happens to our relationship with our God. We're the only ones that can keep the communication lines open. We're the only ones that can choose to remain within Christ and allow Christ to remain in us. Joy is a choice. It's an investment. It is a willingness to love and be open to receiving that love as Christ loved us. It's the willingness to give and receive that allows joy to begin to awaken in us. And once we've allowed Christ to remain within our hearts diligently every day, not by habit, but by choice, then it begins to change us. By inviting Christ in to remain in us, we begin to love as he loves and forgive as he forgives and show grace as Jesus shows grace. The very foundation of our faith begins to strengthen within us if it's not a habit. There is nothing in this world that can separate us from our Creator but we can choose to separate ourselves from it. And what we don't realize is right now we have the roots of joy already within us. 
but we have made decisions not to find our way to live within joy. Indeed, our faith will keep us connected to God through Christ in every circumstance. Regardless of how dangerous and stormy the waters become, or the trusted presence of Christ remaining in us or abiding in us can reassure us that we will always have the strength to rise above the waves no matter how threatening those waves become. And though we can get temporarily distracted, joy is a state of our heart that comes from giving and receiving pure love, unmatched faith, and unimaginable grace. Our heart remains open to receive what it needs to stay healthy. Joy is a permanent state of our hearts that is big enough to allow the changes we face, the fears that we struggle with, and the worries that keep us up at night. But when we have the strength of faith and the depth of trust in our God, that there is no circumstance, there is no trial, there is no illness that we can't move through without joy. Because joy is big enough and strong enough to move us through it and still have room for more. Nothing that could happen, has happened, or is happening could shake the meaning of joy out of our lives because we have the love of a Savior who could we have the love of a Savior whose most extreme joy that he's ever known is the giving of his life to save ours. That is his most genuine point of joy. He prays that we will always know our worth through his sacrifice on our behalf. So I said the verse in the very beginning, and I will say it again right now, because it says it's best. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. And it's in Christ's joy that he looks at his disciples And he says, he looks at all the ones that he loves the most, that he has chosen, though they may not deserve it, though they may be in the worst part of their lives, though they may not have found the joy, the deepest within them, it does not matter. Because he knows that within them, they too can find joy. And he's willing to risk it all so that they can. So in this moment, he takes the bread and he says, each one of you I see were on the table.
I'm going to take you through this as soon as I take you through this. Just so that you know I haven't forgotten you. So as he looks at his brethren around the table and said, you will know my joy all too soon. And maybe you will know my joy in a very intimate way in other ways coming soon. But this is my body broken for you. Take and eat each one of you. Do this and remember me. And at the end of the meal, he looked at each one of his brethren. He said, this is my blood poured out for you. I represent a new covenant. Take and drink and know me in new ways. And know that the love of your Father God has changed. And no longer are you bound by the same practices. No longer must you do things to prove your worth. Because I will die so that you will know how much your Father loves you. Holy Spirit, come down into these elements so that they can come to know of the sacrifices that were left on their behalf, so that they will know that the, the body and the blood of Christ were given on their behalf, and so that they will come to know the, the covenant that was made for them to know you. Amen. So within this communion opportunity, in the very top there are two opportunities here. The wafer is on top, and there's a very thin film on top of it that is often tricky, that may require faith to open it. And so it may require you to pray before it opens to accomplish. And if you continue to pull at it, it will come open. And then there's this little wafer inside, I promise. But it may take, if you start to open up the other one, it'll come, it'll pull up. And the wafer is really little. This is the body of Christ that has been broken for you. Take and eat, said body of Christ. And then from the same tab that you pulled to get said wafer is the juice. This is the blood of Christ. Drink it and remember. And as we remember all that was sacrificed on our behalf, let us continue forward with worship. Cooper, Caroline, let us continue forward.
y'all are amazing, by the way. Cooper and Caroline for leading music, leading worship was awesome today. Please, oh my gosh. Woo! This is wonderful to have you guys today. I, I just want to make a few announcements before we move forward. That is, just so that you know, um, though the, um, we do have nursery for both services. Um, from basically babies to pre-K. So if uh, you have children and you thought um, about that, just go um, across the way in the main building. They do have that available before service starts. At 6.30, the youth. We do have Wednesday night um, youth programming in at the FLC right here at 6.30 every Wednesday. And also note, this is the last night for playing with parables. Um, and you can still register online. I think there may be one or two more spaces left at 6.30 tonight. Um, so please check into that if you can. Um, just wanted to let you guys know. So I leave you with this. Joy is always and already been within each of us, already. If you have one glimpse of faith, if you have a dash of hope, a smidge of trust for our Lord, then you already have access to the lens within you called joy that can change the way you see everything. It can change the amount of strength at your disposal. It can change the amount of the ability that you have to move through the toughest of time. It is by his grace and to his glory that this happens. And it's in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit that I give this to you. Amen, amen, and amen. Blessings. That's it. Have a great day.